Welcome to the Opposites Attack podcast. Now, uh, I got to say that this is one that I've been waiting on. Uh, this is the place where we talk about how we go from opposites attract to opposites attack. And um, I'm your host, Christopher Doc Reed. And normally I have my, my beautiful wife as my co-host, but this is a special edition. This is the Heart of a Man edition. Now, I'm, I'm here with two of my homies, yeah. two of my homeboys, right, right. yeah. and we are going to talk about divorce, and we're going to talk about um, how they recently just went through a divorce, what that's like, um, so we're going to get a peek behind the curtain of what it's like to deal with heartbreak and love and all of that kind of good stuff, so without further ado, I want to welcome to my immediate right, Charles Oliver, but everybody know him as Pook. Oh. Say what's up, homie. What's happening? What's yeah, happening? yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And the gentleman to my furthest side is Mr. Joey Hill. What's How up, you man? How you doing? What's going on? Yeah, yeah. So are, are y'all really ready to get into it? You ready to get into it, man? Okay. We, we here. We All right. Here. So, so what you got to know is, as as they were going through their divorce, um, we developed like these these morning phone calls we would encourage each other and you know yep. all that good stuff and talk about the good the bad and the ugly but i want to ask both of you in doing this like why would you want to get out here publicly as a man mm -hmm. be vulnerable uh transparent put all your your stuff out here and you don't have to especially in this very simp you know, labeled culture. Right. Like if you're too vulnerable, y'all, you're a punk and all that. Right. So why would you want to do this and you don't have to? You take it first. Okay. Um, for me, I look at it as a healing moment. Mm -hmm. um, and it's going to take some time because I, I've been 52 and we've been married for 22 years, but we've known each other for 24. You said been married or, or been were married. married? We were married okay, okay. for 22 years. Oh, okay but we've been knowing each other for 24. Gotcha. So that's basically half of my life. And so me being married and also the whole preparation of to get married, now actually having it, it kind of, for me, it took me out of what Joey once was, is now I got the wife, I got the family, and right. I'm doing everything I'm thinking to do. And so, but I lost myself in that process. So I had to refine Joey again. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it sounds like, how do you lose yourself? You know, how do, how do you, but when you're dedicated and doing all this stuff to make her happy or make the kids happy and, and when you see smiles, then you're smiling because they're happy. Even though it's lack of you or you couldn't go or you had to cancel your thing so they can go and do it. You forget about yourself in that whole talk. So it's therapeutic. And helping me regain back who Joey is. Um, and also learning how to, one thing we talked about, being selfish. Learning how to focus back on me. Not that I am a, a, a selfish or type of person, but just learning how to focus back on me. And, and also to help out any other brothers and sisters that's going through, went through, or may look as though they're going to go through something like this. So did you, I'm going to let you speak, but then I want to ask you, did you go by the happy wife, happy life mantra? Uh, <laughs> yeah, for the most part, um, growing up, seeing a lot of turmoil in my household, single mom, four boys, I'm the youngest of four boys, and then seeing a lot of verbal abuse, um, not physical, but the verbal, and you know, life and death is the power of the tongue. So eventually when you, as the youngest, see what happens to the oldest, the next to the oldest, and then the one above me, and then when it's my turn, I'm kind of like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm messed up. And so, but um, but you still trying to fake it till you make it. You're still thinking you're growing. I grew up as a child of God. With that being said, that was my thing. I wanted to be opposite of how, I seen how I was raised. So just happy wife and making sure she's happy and the kids happy and thinking that that was going to be my solution. Yeah. 
Okay. All right. Yeah. So, Poop. Yes, sir. So with you, man, why would you be willing to do this and... I see you in all black, you know what I'm saying? You're the original bad boy, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know why he needs sunglasses on, but it's cool. Come on, like. Because we inside, hey, you know. Bright, but that's bright, poop, yeah. you know what <laughs> so, 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 so talk to me. Uh, why would you be willing to do this, man? Man, to be honest, we, we've, we uh, me and you have talked, for, I don't know, for years now. You Facts. Know, like, you know, and um, talked to other, other guys and just knowing that, you can have other guys to talk to and encourage them to know like, Hey, you're the only one going through what you're going through. So to actually put it out there and, you know, not to rope Joey in, but knowing Joey and now knowing the situation, we're all together. I've been there, been there, understand the hurts. You ain't the only one dealing with those hurts. You're not the only one d dealing with the recovery process because it is a process to right. recover, you know, exactly. but a lot of times we as men feel like, by ourselves, uh, right? right. Ain't, so about ain't about to tell. Ain't to tell him. Like I tell Reed, man. Ain't about to tell Joe what's going on. Fact. That keep it natural. What's up, fellas? Yeah. <laughs> everything gotta look yeah. all right. Yeah. Everything yeah. gotta be cool. Good. You know what I mean? You don't you want everybody dying. So it's like once I've accepted, like I can tell my story and be okay. Yeah. I can tell my story and let someone else know that hey, I made it out all right. I'm doing really well. I'm happy. Been in a really good, happy space. I haven't. Haven't been in a happy space for years, mm. but now being in a happy space, I'm I'm good. So I'm able to share that and want to tell somebody else about it because we mask a lot. Mm -hmm. Sure do. And not wanting people to know, even when I was going through stuff in my marriage, I may say, Joe, what up, Joe? Right. right, right. <laughs> we like, what up? Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, you see family? Everybody good? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we all right, we straight. We other. straight. Yeah. All right. You don't want to let them yeah, in yeah, like, yeah. nigga, I'm okay. <laughs> women, women, <laughs> women, right. women are more right. comfortable. <laughs> women are more comfortable with getting right into it and oh, saying, yeah, "Girl, yeah, listen, yeah. you know I'm hurting. Yeah. I'm going through blah blah blah." But guys, you know we conditioned. Yeah. You know we conditioned. Yeah. We, you know, we gonna wear that. We gonna wear that mask for the longest. So. Mm -hmm. Wearing the mask is what we've been used to. You know, and and, right. and, and like Joey, um, you you learn to uh, to deal with what's what's in front of you, right? Right. Not knowing that you may not have all the tools. But I'm going to deal with it the way I know how to deal with it. Right. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it messes us up because you're doing what you know how to do. Mm -hmm. We haven't learned anything any different. So now maybe we can get someone else some tools that has helped us to kind of start going through the process and help them to say, hey, there's some things maybe you ain't thought about. Right. Try right. this. It could work. So. Right. So speaking of the tools, I want to go back to the beginning. Uh what would each one of you say you did to prepare yourself for the marriage that you were in? Meaning, did you do premarital counseling? Did you do your own individual counseling? What was it that you did that made you say, I'm ready for this? Um, for me, we, we did premarital counseling. Um, we did premarital with our pastor and then... Uh, some, since I haven't been married before, I had done some counseling already. Right. right. Um, that obviously sucked. Yeah. I'll say this. What I identified and what I've learned now going through my last marriage was I started off wrong. Okay. Like Joey, my story was my parents have been married their whole life. Hmm. So, all I knew was my mom and dad after marriage, right? Right, right. I didn't know them before marriage. Mm -hmm. I wasn't around then. So what I knew was they've always operated like this. Mm -hmm. And then to add on religion, right? Mm -hmm. Supposed to be married. You got to be married. Mm -hmm. This is an other. On fire. Yeah, you got, can't be operating <laughs> out of sin, right? <laughs> um, unfortunately for me, I didn't learn relationships in the midst of knowing about right. you're supposed to be married. Right, right. Okay, so I just know to say I do. But what happens in between there? Right? Exactly. Right. <laughs> right. How, do, how, how are we how do we know how to correspond with one another? Right, right. How do we know how do we have the tools that we need in order to go forward and to work out problems, right? Right, right. Who has problem solving mm, skills? Exactly. And most of the time, oh all, all of that was overlooked because the big picture was just get married. Mm -hmm. Right. We get married, then we'd be okay. Then then I'm, you know, would consider myself, 
my both my pa my my dad is a pastor, my mom is a preacher also. So I was a PK kid in the midst of uh seeing that my mom and dad had this relationship in their marriage. I didn't have the <laughs> I didn't have the tools for a relationship. I didn't have the tools that I needed for um a partner, right? Mm -hmm. Uh but I knew the ultimate goal. Mm -hmm. Mixed kids on top of that. So I had two daughters, have two daughters and I knew I wanted to mimic what I saw. Right. So what I saw was my parents, mm -hmm. my mom, my dad. Right. I needed a mom. <laughs> to fit the set. To fit the set, right? <laughs> right, right. Love was on the back end. Okay. I need someone that fits the position, that fits. So you was playing football. You need a quarterback. I needed a quarterback. You need two receivers. <laughs> yeah, and then actually, you know, it's funny. My, my ex had said that to me a couple of times. She was like, you... You just need a mom for your kids, and da, da, da. I'm like, nah, nah, nah. I would fight it, but in reality, that was it, right? Right, right. I, I really did. I was looking for that mom, right, to fit what I felt was right. Right. Versus me looking for someone I love, mm. someone I could build with, someone we can communicate and problem solve together. So it was the whole narrative that I was looking for versus the actual. Let me fall in love with you and then want to commit to the process. Yeah, right. So right. I missed that part of it. Right. I just gotcha. wanted to get the overall live, save, mm -hmm. be married, and try to die holy, right? <laughs> <laughs> you said try to die holy. Yeah, but in the middle yeah. of that, Nick, I, I was suffering. I'm right, like, right. I'm not happy. Right, right. I'm like, if this whole marriage thing, why well, I got to be unhappy right. the entire time? time? Right, yeah. But I started off wrong. Yeah, facts. That's cool, though, that you take responsibility oh, for, for sure. that. Yeah. For sure, it's on me. Me. Uh, Joey, what did you do to prepare um, uh, for marriage? Well, my mine was um, a lot different. So growing up, <laughs> I used to say, um, okay, so I want a young lady that I can say, man, this is a potential woman that I can marry. So I would typically act as though I had my wife. That's my girl. And so while single, <laughs> and then it really kicked in when I was in college, man. I would literally open the door for an invisible I person. That. I was yeah. there. Hey, y'all. Um, I saw he was It was just more conditioning. Nobody. Yeah, conditioning okay. myself okay. to open the door for whoever she is, close the door, walk around. Um, I would literally um, go different places and... One thing I think I don't think I've ever told you, but I would literally think and hope this would be a place she would like to go. And um, I remember there were times on the weekends I would just go to the mall just to go, but I would be going as though I'm thinking I'm going with her. So you totally engulfed in faith. Yes, it was and mainly a whole was faith. Calling those move, things man. that be not yep. as though they yep. were, and, and all so that. and just also preparing me. For that space of when she comes. Okay. So when she comes, it should just flow naturally. Right. And um, so that was my preparation of my future wife. And so it wasn't nothing crazy, but when you guys first saw it, it was kind of like, I'm the dope folk. <laughs> like it, 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 it wasn't totally crazy. Because we knew you. Yeah, exactly. But exactly. it still looked crazy. Right. <laughs> it did. And so, so, but when, when the fellas was there, I would open the door for y'all. Yeah. And then yeah, it did. was kind of like, you going to be opening the door for me, man. And it's like, man, yeah, you quiet, had to act man. extra masculine. Yeah, you, you had to you act extra hard. Open the door. Wanna, all you tough. didn't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, but after a while, you got used to it. Yeah. And yeah. so, and that was just my preparation of what I would do of what I think I would do for my wife, for my future girl. Okay. All right. So from what I'm hearing, Pook, you did the, I got to have a wife to fit the set to replicate what I saw growing up. Growing up. Yep. Um, and Joey, your thing was, I just got to use my faith mm -hmm. to prepare, to see the type of woman that I want, mm -hmm. believe she's here. And that was in there treating prep. her that particular way. Yeah. Okay. So, right. uh, so, <laughs> did that work for you guys? 
<laughs> we felt like it worked at the beginning. <laughs> right. We but the end of okay. So both of y'all just gave us a recipe for getting divorced. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's like I was Letterman with a D on my chest. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm Letterman. I'm divorced, uh, man. <laughs> put that D on my chest. Like, okay. So with that being said, can you say before you got married, you saw any red flags before you got married that you flat out ignored. Okay. Like a bridge, <laughs> the bridge is out ahead, but oh, you know what? I think that means like put my foot on the gas and just go as fast Keep as going. I can. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> ignore that. Ignore that. I, I can make it. Right, 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 right. <laughs> nah, well, okay, so. You know how people say, if I knew then, what I know now. Right, right, right. So it almost falls in that that category. Did I hear of conversations and things that were red flags? Yes. But I did not know about the red flag and the severity of how important this is. We need to get this fixed, reconstructed for it to be better for you and for me. For our marriage and i did not know that at the time okay. so therefore you hear it you let it go and you keep on moving but you still kind of geeky geeky for we engage we're about to get married you know and so you're moving in that but um even going back to the counseling before getting married yeah we had like two sessions all right all right so you you guys can understand about love and marriage and all that <laughs> right, stuff yeah. you know and uh, so, and it was just two basic conversations of marriage. It didn't get into no in-depth issues or childhood situations or something from the past. How were your parents? Hey, tell me a little bit about your past couple relationships before you guys met. It was nothing like that. Mm -hmm. It was just your basic. Um, so that is... That whole thing right there. It was just, oh, man. So it you, was, you you had the first iteration of, like, church uh, premarital counsel counseling. Like, you had, like, 1.0. Like, it was like Pac-Man. <laughs> Pac right, 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 right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Defender. Yeah. Right, right. It was very beginning. Graphics right. suck. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. All right. Um, yep. Poop, did you see red flags, man? Man. Man. <laughs> 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 did i yeah well yeah yeah well the first once i learned the first red flag was how i was entering it right mm -hmm. the iteration of it was the initial was me not being in the right mind frame to even have what i was looking for right i was trying to put these pieces together mm -hmm. based off of the you know the personnel but i was losing the game before i even got into it um so much so that i did i called it off before we got married okay and i proposed to her mm -hmm. and kept going and you know you get that feeling like it's just just this mm -hmm. just, just ain't this ain't right 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 yeah, like nah you know how you driving and you like something just don't <laughs> it's gonna get dark yeah. you can't see no signs uh -huh. my gps it's not really giving me nothing. Yeah, so it's like, should I keep going? Or should I not? <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Should I stop until, you know, it's sunrise? Right. And then it's like, we're going to thug it out. Let's yeah, just, keep, let's just keep on going. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, let's, let's go forward. Yeah. And uh, nah, it, it you cannot change anyone. That's what I do know. You cannot change anyone. Yeah. You have to know, and now I've learned, what you see and what you have, if mm -hmm. you can't deal with that now, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. It ain't going nowhere. Yeah, nowhere. Because we can go with that if, right? Mm -hmm. You know, people be like, what, what, if, what if I go out and I do hit the lotto? Well, what if you don't? Yeah, <laughs> do you, and don't quit, and you quit your job. What are you going to do? I'm just going to go and keep playing the lotto until I hit. <laughs> until I hit. Yeah, it's like, well, but what if you never do? Mm -hmm. Like, what happens then? Because yeah. there's a lot of ifs. If it was a fifth, yeah, we, we all, all be, be drunk. drunk. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I've seen, seen plenty of red flags be before then. And after talking and hoping it would change, mm -hmm. he to say it never changed. Okay. All right. So I will say that as a relationship coach, that's something I hear 
all the time, men, women. Yeah, I saw red flags in the beginning. Yeah, I definitely did. You know, when I say, well, why didn't you stop? Mm -hmm. You know, it's either, well, I thought it would change. Mm -hmm. um, it would work his way out. For some reason, you know, because I loved him. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always some justification for why you kept going. Right. Um, so note to self, you get that funny little feeling, pay attention and uh, Listen do something. Me. Get off the bus. Got to. Do whatever you got to do. Got to. Okay. Even if the wedding invitations have gone out, hey. it's better to have a little temporary, you know, pain and setback than years of exactly, torment. Sir. Exactly. Okay. So, and, and, and I will say this. Uh, well, or I'll ask this. So you're willing to take responsibility, both of you, for saying, I saw the red flags, but I personally still made the decision to keep going. 100%. No one put a gun yeah. to my head. 100%. Nobody put a gun. It's on me. It's definitely on me. Okay. Yeah. And, and also, nobody put a gun, but it was due to ignorance. You don't, you didn't know. Goes back to the, have I, had I knew then mm -hmm. what I know now. And like I said, due to ignorance. Lack of knowledge. Do mm -hmm. Definitely do the ignorance. Mm -hmm. And, and, so, and uh, dealing with, even with mine, I'm learning and have still, you know, still going through it. I thought that <laughs> let me get a mom, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And have a, show my daughters there's a stable situation here. Yeah. Right? And let them grow up seeing what I had. Right. Mm -hmm. Thinking this going to be gonna a be great outcome right. for them, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <sighs> Nah, it didn't. Then your work didn't. Your plan didn't work out the, the way plan, you wanted it to. Listen, my mom got six kids. Yeah, and the All sad thing is about it is you're a football coach and you're drawing up plans and you just you don't know what you're yeah, doing. Yeah, because you think yeah. football and marriage ain't got ain't the same. <laughs> so X's and O's, right? <laughs> nah, yeah, you know, yeah. marriage got a lot more dynamics to deal with. Yeah, right. I can, you know, we can control right. the stuff so much with football, right? You got 22 guys out there trying to compete and do stuff together, but yeah, yeah it's it's a different mindset going into. It. Especially when you're not coached, but your your default setting is religion. Your default go back setting, to that church. You know what I'm saying? It, yeah. it's, it's there, so it's like I can't operate outside of what I don't know. Mm -hmm. This is all I know. Mm -hmm. I know to operate with. You better do this because this gonna have that. And God, you know, and then you so messed up my default. Yeah. So people that's not raised up like that can go with. Nah, you know, you can try it this way and it'll work. And have it's shown to work, but we only go off what we know. So you're saying there are some missing pieces. I'll just say the way you were raised within church, mm -hmm. which you were personally exposed to, as it prepared you for marriage, there were some gaps. A hundred percent. Okay. Yeah, it's almost like uh, now when you go to, to to school, right? You go to high school, mm -hmm. and they start giving you history. Then you start looking up black history mm -hmm. in a regular high school. Yeah. Then they're going to hit on the highlights, right? Yeah, Martin yeah. Luther King yeah, yeah, yeah. and, you know, Malcolm X. And, we'll just give know. him a Martin. Yeah, yeah. 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 Just, you know, <laughs> and then you start getting like, I didn't know all this other stuff. All this right. other stuff, right. You know, yeah. you know what I mean? Right, so right. It's only, they only go hit the highlights right. of some right. stuff, but they're not getting to the detail they ain't getting deep. Right. of yeah. what happened. So, okay. yeah, there's definitely some gaps. Yeah, and, and in all honesty, Whoever you were looking to for guidance, they could only give you what they knew. For sure. Yeah. yeah. And, and, I mean, and on top of that, just think, even with our own kids, how, my mom and dad, they had us, but how many times are they sitting down preparing us for a relationship? Facts. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Because yeah. most of the time, no as a man, <laughs> I'm showing my daughters, I want them to see, this is how a man's supposed to do you. Let me take you out on a date. Yeah. Let me show you how a man is supposed to. Let me open the door up for you, right? I'm yeah. trying to do it through my right. actions, right? right? It's not a lot of times that we're sitting down and saying, hey, you as the little girl, as the woman, you need to be as open and right. appreciative of right. me opening this door. Because mm -hmm. you can have an attitude. I remember me having, my daughter having an attitude and I'm opening the door up. And then You're I right. how does that work? It, right? like, <laughs> how, how am I preparing her to be like, hey, baby girl, first off, you should be appreciative of the acts that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. But yeah. how many times did I take time to show them and teach them that? Right, right. We're going through the actions. Let's just show them with the actions. Let's right, just show this. Right, so, right, right. You know, a lot of times we just didn't dive into that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I only had two kids. My mom and dad had six. So I just imagine trying to show all them Man. different dynamics. Yeah, that, that right there is a whole podcast yeah. by itself. Trust yeah. me. Six yeah. and all that. Yeah, that's like the... Um, 
what's the Jackson uh, Fives uh, yeah, 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 biopic? Yeah, so, okay, here's a question. What is it that you think your ex-spouse, what is it that, I guess, from their background, what contributed to how they showed up in the relationship? Because, you know, if both of you are divorced, it takes two to tangle. There's some particular reason why things went the way they went. Mm -hmm. So why do, what, what, what helped, I guess, shape their view of how they approach relationships? Good question. Um, standing <laughs> on the outside looking at them, um, I think mine was a situation of them being a pretender. Mm. So um, now knowing some past things had happened and occurred, mm -hmm. so makes me almost want to say, did I actually meet? the real person mm. so mm. Um, I, I'm not trying to put my ex on blast or anything like that right but I'm only going to tell the truth so when you say pretender right. what do you mean well um, <clears throat> we can all be a certain way mm -hmm. when we're meeting somebody right, or when right. we're going somewhere right we can all dress up to the best mm -hmm. look the best mm -hmm. Sunday's best yes mm -hmm. it's absolutely it. but after that dies down, they go home, they just back to their normal self, you know. Okay. Tomorrow they're going to wear sweatpants and an oversized shirt. You know, it ain't going to be the makeup all done up and mm -hmm. all this. But and, you and, always, to, and to be fair, in the beginning of a relationship, everybody has a little bit of that. Everybody, right? even the guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. we all, all going to do the best, exactly, best foot. Exactly. Put the best foot forward. So when did you feel like then you realized just off the that being a pretender that this was something different, more than just this initial honeymoon phase, put your best foot forward, but this was something deeper. Years later. Like, like give us an idea. I, I would guesstimate, okay, so we been married for 22. Mm -hmm. I would guesstimate when things were brought to my attention. Okay. And really? I didn't know that. So maybe that could be the reason why, mm. blah, blah, okay. blah, 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 blah. Okay. And that was probably year 22. I mean, year 20. Wow. Year 19. Wow. Really? So wow. you don't know, like you said, you don't know till you know. Yeah. And so yeah. I, did, I had no idea. Now, mind you, when my mind frame is still serving my family, being there for my family, providing for my family, I will take the last. You guys go first. And if I don't get to enjoy or come with you, I'll see it at a different time, you know. But long as y'all go and y'all have fun and y'all got in, you know what I'm saying, or y'all got to eat. Now, let me let me say this real quick about that. Um, you're probably the nicest human being I've ever met. <laughs> <laughs> ever. You know, ever, um, yeah. and, and, and Pook is here. He can give his opinion. But you would be hard-pressed to find somebody – Say, hey, do you know Joey? You know, like, oh, yeah, good dude, good dude, good dude. Um, <laughs> now, somebody may say, you know, in what I do as a relationship coach, you know, one of the areas I specialize in is narcissism. And, you know, we know narcissists can put up a front, right? And But, but behind closed doors, they're horrible, you know, people. Somebody right. can say, well, you know, maybe Joey's like that. No, he's not. I mean, I've, I've seen you in a variety of situations. I've seen you in situations, uh, different situations where – average person would have really went off the deep end but you did not at right. all and everybody's around you like dude like uh, are you broken <laughs> <laughs> are you hurting in any way <laughs> yeah 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 uh so with that being said you know when you talk about i put my family first mm -hmm. uh, i wanted to give context to that like what that means for someone like you, like that's something that you rode and died by. Right. Well, I made a long, I made a decision a long time ago um, at Central. Say I was a, back in '89 when I first got to Central. Grew up, got baptized at seven. You know, tried to do the thing like Jesus would do. And at the time, school was on three quarters. Mm -hmm. So the first quarter, 
when I got there, I said, you know what? I can keep doing this church thing if I want, or I can be, I'm here by myself. I'm, a, I'm grown and I'm 18. So think you grown, you independent. I can do what I want. Well, when I seen so many people dropped out of school after that first three months, either they got pregnant, got caught selling, had illegal stuff on them, and the number had just dropped. And I said, wow. What happened to so-and-so? Oh, they can't come back, blah, blah, blah. And if something just triggered, man, I think I might just keep doing this God thing. And um, Now, I know you had temptation. I had temptation not the yin no man. Stories, <laughs> but I just know oh, the ladies love, well, both of these guys, actually. But, uh, Joey, the chocolate, perfect teeth, oh, on college campus, <laughs> looking like, and I know they was coming at you hard, man, but you decided that's not the route you wanted to go. You didn't nah. want to be a player. As a, as I grew up more and more, I just knew that I'm going to be a man of God. I basically saved myself. I'm still a virgin when I was at Central State. Um, and um, I just knew what I wasn't going to do, and I wasn't going to be a punk about it. I wasn't going to fall down about it. Um, I just knew what Joey will and will not do. Mm -hmm. you either cool with that or you got the problem mm -hmm. that's how i looked at it mm -hmm. so i took it as that so it's, it's nothing special nothing extra it's just that's just the way i rolled either you're down with that or okay i am keep it moving so so, <laughs> so so you bring that into the marriage um like i said you know i'm, I'm all about my family and then like you said you started to realize some things um, do you feel like you didn't, cause you said you just didn't realize it till like maybe year 20, 19, mm -hmm. you know, people might say, well, dang, that's a long time, bro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. So was it that you just didn't realize it because you just had one focus just to make sure you gave, 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 gave and receiving or thinking about whatever it is you should have gotten just, it wasn't on your radar. Right. That's exactly what it was. I just gave, gave, gave. Provided, provided, provided. But until you and I had a conversation, and I think we was on the phone with Sarah, <laughs> and, and y'all had said, hey, Joey, hold on, man. So you telling me that she's blah, 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 blah? I'm like, yeah. That don't sound right. Really? <laughs> Sounds cool to me, you know. <laughs> and, and it may seem like, Dude, this dumb. This dude is dumb. <laughs> like a, a oh. bag of bricks, you know, oh. a bag of rocks. And but oh. I didn't oh. know. I didn't know. <laughs> you know the cartoon with the with the turtle. He said, "Hey oh. man, so." But you did. I didn't know oh. until I <laughs> until y'all brought it to my attention, and that's the time when I began to wake up. Mm. That had to be a serious wake up. Yeah, for real, man. <laughs> you know I mean? Now, yeah. mind you, some people may think, but how did you not know? <laughs> but when you, like That's I said, I like, when you locked I into it, <laughs> when you locked into it and you're doing your thing and you're thinking you're doing it unto God, you know, under the whole umbrella of God and just... Because I didn't look at my wife as a beautiful person. I looked at her as I was just serving God through my wife. Okay. And that was my motivation. That was my thing. So, like, right now, I don't know how to go and be a boyfriend again. I just know how to be a husband. Mm, okay. I don't. I don't. Okay. okay. <laughs> Drop I don't know how. I don't know how to be uh, that, you know, in the way the world is now, it's a little intimidating getting out there trying like being to in prison start for 20 some years. Yeah, man. right, right. You, and you get back out. out. Got like I got my <laughs> platform with, <laughs> with fish tanks on my shoes. <laughs> Look at him. He's <laughs> in his shoes. <laughs> so, and I'm up here trying to be like everything. I'm like, this is totally different. Now. <laughs> you got spaceships. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's just a different. So I just know that I want to be a husband again. But then again, I need time for myself, get Joey right, so I don't have these triggers for whomever I meet next. I don't want to have put her up against the wall. Nah, 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 you can't do that. You can't have no business. You want to open up. Nah, mm -mm. Right. I knew what happened. No, I can't. I can't 
do that. That wouldn't be right. That wouldn't be fair. So you don't want to punish your next because he exactly. Ex, sure. So I need yeah. to get Joey back right and get Joey in line and get Joey um, to the point how Joey used to be. You uh-huh. know, just more older, mature, understanding, and be able to say, okay, now it'd be a good time, or it could be spurred. I'm like, man, so much time went by. I met a young lady, you right. know, yeah, yeah. Or, or I've been knowing the young lady. I think I might go ahead and lock it down and just see if she feels the same. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, so, right. Yeah. Okay. All right, Poop. Um, for you, like, what contributed to how your ex showed up in the relationship, like from her past upbringing or whatever? Um, now you know, totally looking from my opinion, right? Um, it definitely. How you how you're raised, mm-hmm. um, and and again, you, I tease you about being <laughs> um, only child. So mm-hmm. Only child, hey man. Don't hate on only children. On only yeah. children. We're dope. We're amazing people. Y'all definitely. can be. Yeah, definitely can be. <laughs> but it's some things that <laughs> <laughs> we're not selfish. <laughs> Not true. <laughs> um, and give me my ball back. Right, 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 <laughs> right, right. right. So the whole only child syndrome, right, is a, is a real thing. Yeah. It, it, it is a, uh, it, it is no fault to them or to you. But again, like we're saying, you only know what you know. Right. If right. you don't have to share, you ain't going to share. <laughs> right, right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you don't have to consider someone right. else. Not gonna consider someone else. Right. So that's one thing. Um, and then to it it is a different perspective you have when you have two parent household. Mm-hmm. Right? It's just naturally how things work. Right. Yep. Not saying every two parent household works the same. Particularly for mine, um, my mom gave a narrative to me and to us that my dad, whatever my dad said was it. Yeah. <laughs> what no. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's we I mean people that do know know me and know our you know my story, we traveled the country and not one time my mom ever said, They out too late. Y'all getting home at four in the morning. Right. Y'all can go to school. Nothing. Cause y'all are part of a childhood group. Right, you know, right. Families, so being uh, part group, of right. So I was traveling yeah. and, and mm-hmm. that whole thing. So that was my narrative. It's like I don't know how what conversation they had behind closed doors, uh-huh, but uh-huh. the picture was, Dad said we're going to do this. Uh-huh. That's what we're going. That's what we're going to do. You know uh-huh. what I mean? So, and then, so looking at at how our child rearing was different, right? So with 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 uh, us coming down, it, it's a uh, you treat people, you handle things, you do this, and as a kid, us being taught, it's just. Grown ups are grown ups, kids are kids, right? right yeah. So how you deal with things is, it wasn't. We didn't sit down for a group discussion with my mom and dad. They didn't invite <laughs> us to the table. Hey, get just everybody, opinion. just get your opinions, <laughs> get your thoughts on this. Go, All right? twelve of us. Let's yeah, <laughs> just sit down and see. It was, hey, this is what we about to go do. Go get y'all stuff. Oh yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. And that's how it went. So that caused other issues, you know, with us also. Um, but just looking at how my my dad didn't have no problem telling us when we was wrong. Mm-hmm. Mom and dad, biggest cheerleaders, but training us first, right? Right, yeah. So it was, you're going to do this, 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 and this, and this, these are the outcomes that are going to come from it. Mm-hmm. Not, uh, what you think you want to do? Mm-hmm. No. It, was, it wasn't that. Mm-hmm. My opinion didn't matter in, in those spaces. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I'm not saying it right. It was right, but it was just all I knew, right? right so right, it was right. like... When we sitting down and let's ask him what we want to do. I'm like, well, <laughs> ask him what you mean. No, like they, they're six. Right, yeah, yeah. If they don't, no, we need to encourage and help them. So, right. so y'all, had, y'all, y'all had different parenting style based right. off of how y'all were raised. Right, yeah. but and also, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a different thing when you go to someone for like a counselor. And it's like going to a counselor that's never been married. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. They give you marital counseling. So uh, having someone and you be like, "Wow, well, I, I don't been around my friends. They was married. Mm-hmm. Their parents was married. Mm-hmm. That ain't your house. Not at all. So your perspective of how that works 
ain't a real no, life experience, exactly. not right? Reality. Exactly. So no matter how much you stay over their house, no matter how much you can spend the night with them four days out of the week, every I was practically over there. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, when you have a guest in your house, mm -hmm. you ain't raised the same way, right? 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 So right. It, it was just a different perspective on how marriage work, how relationships work, and how your world works with someone else's. Mm -hmm. And it, it took a lot of time to understand certain things will not change with that situation. Yeah, Man. a lot of phone calls. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what you doing? <laughs> uh, so when, and, and maybe you already answered a little bit, but when did you first realize, you first said to yourself, that moment, I don't think I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> What's up with the smiles? Is that like a joke? Oh. Hey, two men going to a bar, right? <laughs> One man says to the other man. <laughs> Y'all both was like, <laughs> like play, uh, play. <laughs> for me, I said early on, right? I said my before. Um, I was like, I, I can't. I can't do this. Um, before you got married. Before I got married. Yeah. I even talked to her dad. And her dad was like, hey, well, hey, son, you know, I, I, it, it just me be butterflies and this is that and the other. And I'm like, nah, that is not that. It's not that. It's not bubblegum. Wow. Yeah, it's not that. It's <laughs> really um, <laughs> the way I just didn't feel like it was two people that could cooperate yeah. with one another. Right? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's like the Holy Ghost. Yeah, it, it's like whatever it's feeling. And, and I'll say this, even with counseling and stuff. Certain things that we born with, which is your heart, mm -hmm. you gotta you gotta go with your heart, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. you can just feel your gut be like, oh, this ain't mm -hmm. this ain't it. Mm -hmm. But in my mind, you know, I just talk and I'm like, oh, we'll try it. Yeah. When it gets don't my do it. it. Right. And the don't whole time. Do it. <laughs> you know, nah, nah, I think I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it was early on for me, and then it just got to a point to where it was like. If this house gonna be, then I'd rather be alone and be okay than be with someone and be unhappy. So do you remember that moment? Because I, I I remember there were a lot of times we would talk, <laughs> and you know you was really you know. And to be fair, this was your third marriage, right? right. Okay, and so meaning I'm not trying to do this again. Yeah, like you went into it with a mindset of this is it for mm -hmm. me. I'm not mm -hmm. getting married a fourth time. This is it. I, I have to make this work. Make this work. Yep. So when you go into it with that mindset, mm -hmm. that kind of resolve. Yeah. And you still manage to say, I can't do it. Man. So Man. something had to really happen. That straw that broke that camel's back. Do you remember when you first said to yourself and you just relented and said, I, I can't do it? Yeah. And, and then what emotions went along with that? Was it shame? Was it embarrassment? Was it disappointment? Did you feel like a failure? Like, um, it, it was more so the, A, the need meter, right? Mm -hmm. there, there's Your need meter is like what you need, your expectations, mm -hmm. how things go. And then finally getting to the point like, it can't be this tough. It, can, <laughs> it cannot be this tough. Like, I'm doing what I feel and what I've been taught right. is a responsible thing to do to try to provide, to try to make sure you're working very hard to give them better than average or what they had before, right? right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And then when you're providing and you're giving and you're being the stepdad and you're doing the things that you feel like that's what men would do, right? And only to come home and be like, <laughs> this is it uh -huh. and filled with anguish and filled with you know like we can't even talk mm -hmm. we can't have a normal conversation yeah but go through life like this is the way it's supposed to be it's like nah i i can't in normal conversations would turn to arguments when i say normal like it could be how it's work what you mean <laughs> I mean, just how just was how it? was work. <laughs> you know what I mean? Everything was a, a argument. Everything, and it's like, 
And then you add not trust, right? And then me having my own battles with uh, prior in my other relationships, I cheated every time. Mm-hmm. Every single time. I wasn't Joey. Joey was wholesome. Joey was good. Yeah, yeah. Joey was like I said, you got all total, on your all black bad I boy a, I was a total opposite. Like growing, growing, up in, growing up in church, I didn't I didn't have no clubs and stuff to be hidden. So and the more we traveled though, it was like it was beautiful <laughs> women everywhere. Right? So it was Hi. that was a platform. Yeah, Pook, Pook is a bass player. <laughs> right, right. And, you know, he got that musician thing on him, you know. <laughs> Women would look at him. And, you know, he told me if they do the double oh, look, man, right, the on, double man. take. <laughs> <laughs> so if any of y'all seen him play bass, don't look at him twice. You know, because so, he know, yeah. Poo, poo. So, so doing that, <laughs> man, having, having a platform, it became easier, right? Yeah. So, I never looked at, I never looked at it like let me be, the best I can be, and not cheat. I'm, I looked at things like, oh, okay, y'all want to talk. I to call somebody else. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. You you're not showing me this. I got somebody, somebody else, else will, right? Right, right. Because there's always somebody else lined up. Right. And going through that this time is like, you know, speaking back to what you were saying, like this is my third, I'm not doing what I was doing before. No matter what she do, I'm staying true. I gotta teach myself that it's not her responsibility to keep me. Mm-hmm. I have to do what I need to do to make sure mm-hmm. I'm being whole. Right. I make sure I'm being okay. Don't respond how I normally would respond to the things that are going on. Right, so right. if there is cheating going on, when there is another, you know there's trust being violated and broke, you don't go reach for somebody else, right? Mm-hmm. So I didn't know why I was doing it, but I just knew I needed to not do the same thing that I have been doing in, in the other relationships. Right. And a lot of hall passes I had <laughs> to do, right? Uh-huh. Um, and... The whole time, it's like, you know, when you know, you see somebody, like, they hit you, and you're like, why you hit me? And they be like, I didn't hit you. I just, literally, me, it's only me and you sitting here. So right. I know you hit oh, me. They call that gaslighting. Right. So a lot of that will happen, right? And I'm like, okay, I know this is going on. I know particularly it was things that was happening that I would definitely question and know was, you know, cheating and stuff. Um, but I said, nah, I'm not. I'm not going to revert and go sleep with somebody else. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not saying I didn't hold conversations and talk to other people, but going to go and sleeping and doing, wouldn't do it. It's mm-hmm. like, you know what? I'm not going to do it. I, I didn't think divorce was coming then. Okay. I just knew that I'm setting myself up to be a lot more disciplined, right? Gotcha. And get myself disciplined so it won't be on her. Right. And I'm like, I want to be able, if I do leave and we do end this, I could walk away saying, I ain't touched nobody else. Mm-hmm. I didn't. Yeah. I, I left him alone. I walked away. Not saying I got any uh, good attaboys on the back after I left from that situation. <laughs> but for your own dignity and self to right. say, nah, I didn't I didn't do that. Yeah. Now, they could paint whatever picture they want. Right. But I do know me going out and sleep with somebody else mm-hmm. I didn't, do didn't happen. Right. Yeah. I have Yeah. I mean, that's uh, it's a sign of maturity to say I'm not going to do what I used to do, even if I feel like I legitimately am justified to oh, do yeah. it. To do it. You know, and that's and that's not hard. I mean, that's not easy yeah. uh, to do that. Extremely um, hard so it had to be some conviction involved. So, Joey, and I know you say a little bit like you're 19, whatever, 20, but do you remember mm-hmm. that defining <laughs> moment when you was like, I can't do this anymore? Because I know for you, like it was a one and done. Like I'm not getting married no two times. This is it. I'll stick it out, you know, for better, for worse, richer, or poor, and all that. You know, death do us part. So for somebody like you, anybody that were here, oh, you know, Joey got the what? What? <laughs> Joey? Not Joey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that has to be monumental for you to come to that conclusion. But do you remember that yeah. moment when you said, I, I can't do this anymore? Um, Year one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. But we got divorced March twenty-third of twenty-three. Mm-hmm. September thirtieth, mm. twenty twenty-two. 
is when I said, I think this is it. That's your birthday. That's my birthday. Hey. That's how you celebrate it. Yep. Hey. Yep. I met my wife on my birthday. Really? 98. Skating? At the skating rink. Yeah. And then September 30th of 22 is when I said, I think it's over. What, what what gave you this revelation at that moment? I mean, with all that go happens in a marriage, all that goes into marriage, what was it, I'll just say the proverbial straw that broke the camel's back for you? Um, it was, uh, so in early, mid-September, I went to Cabo. I went on vacation by myself. Um, it was to be for the whole family, and then kids couldn't go and then we needed someone to be home for our daughter and we weren't going to ask her parents to can you come down every day for the next five days to watch our daughter and so I had shared why don't you stay home and watch our daughter and I'm like, I want to go it's like I know you want to go but why don't you stay home and he just got back from and then you just got back from, and when I say just got back from, I'm talking within 30 days. So did, you go, just, did you go on those trips? I did not go on those trips. <coughs> and so it was kind of. You didn't want to go? <laughs> um, I couldn't go. Work? One of, it was work. Oh, okay. And then one of them came spontaneous, and it was a uh, seven day, and I couldn't get off. Yeah. That was too quick of a note. But it was. Uh, so it wasn't planned out. It was, no, no. Now somebody might say, it, "Well, why wouldn't you want your wife to go to Cabo?" That I mean, if she wants to go, like, why wouldn't you want your wife to go? Well, I needed to go by myself because I was in the mind frame of saying, "You know what? I can. I need to really figure out, think about if this is what I'm going to continue doing." Now, okay. at this time, I'm awake. I see certain things, how things are not changing due to some things from the past that not have been resolved. And I'm like, I've been praying and believing and encouraging. And it's been things that were said back to me in my face. Let's just sweep it under the rug, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Let it go. And I'm like, nah, I'm tired of that. Mm -hmm. And so um, on that day, September 30th, a um, little something, something was about to get and go down, and then it didn't. And we had a little conversation. She asked me a question, and I answered back, and it was the type of question that was, you know, but why is it that you feel like you got to, and why you want to? And I'm like, hmm. And just from the questionings that were asked. And when you say something, something, you're talking about intimacy. Yeah, it was about uh -huh. the <laughs> was about to have praise and worship. <laughs> 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 on, on your birthday? On my birthday. Oh, but you okay. didn't get it. And no. Uh, oh, and didn't so you get no birthday sex? That's horrible. Nah, nah. <laughs> so if anybody out there. <laughs> the beard the started 10,000. Okay. And then, um, and, and mind you, like I said, I'm not trying to throw them under the bus, but I'm telling you the truth. And I'm about to get and go work out. Got up and that's what you that, were told. Yeah. Okay. And then at that moment, I said, coming back from Cabo, all this thinking, guess that's it. Mm. I think we are done. And then maybe three days later, it was probably October 3rd, 3rd or the 4th, and we had a disagreement about something. And it was regarding something that was on her. And I didn't play into it to do a tit for tat and get more and angry. And I just said, you know what? Um, we've already talked about that before and you must've forgot what we talked about type of deal. And I just said, you know what? It just seems like you want to make your own decisions and you want to do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. How about you go ahead and continue doing that? I'll go do my life, do me. And then if I meet somebody, or 
when I meet somebody that will be able to satisfy my needs as well as your, uh, as hers, then you'll meet somebody to satisfy your needs. Just hopefully you can satisfy theirs. I want a divorce. And I'm the one that came out and initiated it. Cause I was, I was done. It was done. And I just said, I want a divorce. Did either one of you try marriage counseling as a last, last ditch effort to say, because people say, well, why did y'all just give up? Why don't you just try counseling to get help? As a last ditch, uh, we had actually did mar- marriage, marital counseling several times, um, off and on. Uh, start off good. Mm-hmm. Start off everybody putting out there what the problem is. And, and I know you got a very high opinion of marriage counseling. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wonderful people. Nah, yeah, right. um, it's, uh, it, it can be good practical tools, right? Yeah. But it, it, it's, it's, it's um, sitting down, us both going through it, and much like the relationship, it's, it starts formulating into, let me prove my point. Mm-hmm. Let me get out what I want to get out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And kind of like normal, if Joey is used to being quiet, or I'm used to being quiet, and putting my opinion and putting my things up under mm-hmm. just to save an argument, that's what you find yourself doing. Exactly. Exactly. You know I mean? You're like, exactly. I don't agree, but I'm just going to try to keep this yeah. smooth. And, yeah. if, and, and because Joey don't raise his voice, I try not to raise my voice. I try not to stand up and talk with my hands and do a whole lot of pointing, then that would make a, another person feel like I'm going to bow out because your temperature is raised. You mm-hmm, didn't elevate mm-hmm, it, right? Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. you're going to elevate, being the man, taking responsibility, I bow out, right? Cool. cool. So, after so going, the counselor couldn't say, let's everybody calm down and let's just communicate? Well, <laughs> some some... Uh, going through f- three or four counselors, counselors, we uh, we would go for a while, and when it's time to uh, do homework, to kind of self reflect, mm-hmm. the reflection always seemed to come. Let me hold a mirror at you. Oh, okay. And you do it so right, right. <laughs> and then uh, at the same time, when you go, when you go before a counselor, it's almost like going to the doctor, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. How many people going to show out in front of the doctor? Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. That's how many people are yeah. going to show out really? Now, you work in a school system, sometimes you're going to get that parent that come up there hot. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to let the whole office know, like, oh, y'all ain't da 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 But then, most of the time, if you got parents coming up, they ain't on 10. Right. You right. really got to do some things to get them engaged to kind of get them going. So right. it was the same thing with counseling. We, we did counseling up until uh, off and on. Up until one of my other best friends said, uh, hey, man, I'm going to pay for your last counseling sessions. Now, this is after. I'm like, no, I was done. I'm done. Wow, I'm, wow, wow. I'm going to go through. He's like, he bro. Said, he's a good friend. <laughs> yeah, go. <laughs> and how much was it? He said, go. How much did you say? Your first one. <laughs> I'm like, wow, he's right? a great friend. <laughs> said, right. We're going to go. We, we started going. Um, and... I still got some of the test messages from that counselor. We neither one of us knew, him, right? It was a referral from my, my guy, a good Christian counselor, man. And uh, we we talked, we spoke, um, because during most of the sessions, you get an hour session, right? Mm-hmm. That you're paying for. But if uh, if Joey got loud on his mind this session. Probably 45 minutes of what Joey got going on in his mind is going to be on the table, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. So I got to do a lot of this. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yep. Not. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Why? Right, right. Because Joey, you know. Dominating the conversation. Right. And, you know, after a few of those, we, we had a group text. Mm-hmm. Me, him, her. And he said, hey, let's keep all questions and stuff this way, right? And in, in, in the thread, and outside of the thread, I said, "Hey, can I give you a call?" You know, gave him a call. I said, um, "I understand how things are going, but this is our fifth one, and so far, 
three minutes out of this 59, 57, <laughs> 60, I'm able to rebuttal or even get, you know, stuff out. He'll ask both the same questions, mm -hmm. but it's always dominated by the opposite party. So the next conversation, he said, hey, listen, we're, we want to go ahead and try to make sure you guys talk and give each don't interrupt let's try to give each other space to talk and rebuttal whatever whatever and he started off asking me the question first typically it would be her so in this incident he uh let me go and ask what was going on and some other things and because the first two questions was geared to allow me to speak first now oh, it was hot hot because it felt as if you're allowing him to speak and he, she even brought that up. Mm -hmm. And he said, um, you do realize most of the time he doesn't get a chance to speak to, that ain't fair. And, you know, so then it's <laughs> too much, uh, a lot of that. So I, we did try a lot of marital counseling. And I actually end up, after she refused to carry on with the counselor, I called you. I said, hey, Reed. I'm going to go ahead and keep going and doing mm -hmm. counseling just so I can get right. things uh, done for me, right? Mm -hmm. I'm like, right now, I want to focus on me mm -hmm. and not make it. I understand what it was started off as, right? right. started off as both of us, but you can't make nobody do right. anything they don't want to do. So I carried on. I, I kept I kept going through it, and um, actually, he he hit me with, uh, hey, man, you done done this a couple times. You done been married a couple times. It's like not one time have you said you got married for love. Wow. Wow. So like, why'd you get married? Mm. Mm. And it, that came to religion and kids. Mm. He said, that's when I started, like, he, he pointed out to me, you starting off wrong. Yeah. If you starting off like that, then what happens when they, you know, when the kids are grown? What happens when mm. you don't have to have that right. symbol of right. whole household? Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, it. I don't know why something so simple, just you know. Truth like, often is simple. Dang, like yeah. it is true. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, I, I tried to. We 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 definitely went to the counseling several times, several times. Now, I know you're a counselor, but I will say, <laughs> I'm sitting here on the couch because it didn't work. <laughs> it, yeah. It, it, it yeah. did. It did not. I mean, and what I will say with that, I do believe therapy and counseling. I do believe in it. It does work, but you have both of you all have to be bought into Absolutely. it. Absolutely, both of you have to into it. Then we're going through the acts of it, right? Jesus exactly. couldn't save everybody. He couldn't. He oh. couldn't. You know. So I'm not going to say counseling doesn't work because I do believe it does. Mm -hmm. But it takes two people that's invested mm -hmm. into it to actually want to take ownership of them first, right? Before I start looking at right them. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So, yeah. Okay. All right, Mr. Joey, did you try? Counseling uh -huh. um, to save. Yep. Okay. What? So, uh, <laughs> actually, uh, yeah. First of all, y'all not really making a good commercial <laughs> on behalf, and I'm, a, I'm, I'm personally saying. offended considering I'm in this space. Like, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a little offended no, since I'm, I'm in that space. You know, yeah. It, right. I'm, yeah. yeah. So, how did George uh, go, Joey? We went. We got married 2000. Mm -hmm. Okay. We began to go to counseling in 09. Okay. We've been having counseling until we were divorced in 23. So from 09 to 15, it was lies on their part. Because mm. there were things going on that was not being shared. So you remember after seven, uh, I give you the rain, the moon, the sun, the stars, <laughs> and the mountain. <laughs> Had I given her all of that, it still wouldn't have been enough. According okay. to what was going on in their life, you tried though. Exactly, you, you definitely. Tried. I remember tried going to <laughs> Jared and I bought this chocolate diamond ring, Ooh. and um, presented it. And I was oh nice, nice, nice. And um, but that wasn't enough to stop what was going on. Mm -hmm. I remember going and buying some other things, and it wasn't enough to stop. So when I'm com when I'm going against all that stuff that they're doing compared to here I am doing this when they go and do an event and come back home and I have a surprise and this no comparison. Mm -hmm. So I'm fighting up an uphill battle 
Mm-hmm. So from 09 to 15 until everything came out, came out the bag, it was all lies. Now, there could have been some truth in it, but it mainly the lies. Mm-hmm. And then when everything came out from 15 to 23, you know, with the everything the cat's out the bag type of information, it still didn't – it still didn't feel as though there was breakthrough when it came to them. Mm. Now, mind you, my issues were I grew up always trying to prepare myself for this woman. With that being said, to to paint a picture of exactly what was Joey's thing that he got over, what was his trauma? Mine was just from the verbal abuse from my mom and seeing of everything she did from the oldest brother to the next oldest brother and then to the next one. And then when it came down to me, again, here I am like, <laughs> you know, so what, what I just said, okay, so Joey, we're going to, we're going to do the opposite of what we saw and how we were raised. So my mother cuss like a sailor when she's happy. Oh, nice words. But soon as she get upset, man, 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 man. Mm-hmm. So that's why I don't. I choose not to cuss to this day. Mm-hmm. Um, my mother smoked, so I choose not to smoke. Uh, don't drink. Um, um, you just perfect. I just don't. I, <laughs> instead of going you off and getting up, not quiet. <laughs> <laughs> instead of going off, going off, going off, I just try to handle it, stay calm. Um, high blood pressure, sugar, diabetes run through my family like water. So I just told myself to not to not have these generational illnesses, but also helping it to stress out or be upset and get mad. I just say, nah, just take it grain of salt. So that's what I did during that whole time to help me. And so when I noticed it wasn't getting better, and and that's that's a tough thing, man, when you go with, oh, multiple counselors as well. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. And I'm talking elders, pastors, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. stuff like that, man. And and but when you don't have that counselor that knows how to pull that particular thing out of you, say, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We're not gonna stop right there. Let's go back a couple steps. Right. Um, share with me about your childhood. I never heard nobody ask about yeah. that. True. Nothing. So I'm dealing with all that stuff and then just came to a head. On September 30th, 23, it gets over. And then around the 3rd or 4th of October is when I told her. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I, I got a question for you. With me, how, how did it feel for you when you left counseling? That, like when you know it's like we're going through the process, right? Uh-huh. How, how did it feel on some of your counseling sessions? When you left? Um, it felt like for me, I looked at it as, Okay, that's a nice little helpful point for me. Okay, mm-hmm. I'm going to take that. And then I'm going to try to begin to this, incorporate into my day-to-day. But when it came to them, I'm like, mm, I haven't really seen that much being done at home or the homework part afterwards. Um, I think sometimes when you get the literature here, I want y'all both read these and, and take these home, read those to each other. And then and it, that's one thing. But if I don't see a difference, if we had went at 11 a.m., but from there on at home and the next day and the next day and the next day and the next day, and I don't see some of that exercise being operated from, but don't you remember what she said before we got the papers and stuff like that? (laughs) I mean, I don't see none of that being done. I don't see none of that being worked. And so, um, yeah, I I, I walk out kind of, all right, that was, how much was that, Coach? Uh shoot. I, I was eighty something dollars. <laughs> Copays add up. <laughs> Heck shit. Yeah. So if I had to add that all up, I would have a nice ride. You know, oh, yeah. double up. So yeah. um, nice, but, nice but Maybach. Exactly. Right and and so I came out feeling a little bit help for me. Mm-hmm. With that being said, there could have been some moments that helped them, but I didn't notice a drastic change of that really, really helped. Now, if I had to pick one particular person, she or he, I can't say. Yeah, that, that, that was that was my feeling a lot of times, leaving or getting off the phone, right? Mm-hmm. It'd be like, still unfulfilled. What, 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 <laughs> yeah. what do we do this Exactly. Morning? You know what I mean? Exactly. You, 
on some instances, uh, it it never it never felt like it was something that made you that hit home to be like exactly okay. I like that. I think one. we got a starting point now, right? Yeah, right, right. Like for us, I like, like that. One. I yeah. can see. All right, cool. Here we go. It sparked something mm-hmm. for us to mm-hmm. now on a ride home. Now if we ride together and we got to go go home, and it's been a heated one. Let's go. <laughs> you all right. Like, right. Nothing to me. I ain't saying nothing to you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you over there like. <laughs> <laughs> right. You like, know what I mean? So there, it, it's two instances I remember um, with a counselor that uh, one was after, um, right, right before, right before I was about to get the divorces over. Um, once we filed the paperwork, and I had given paperwork mm-hmm. several times, right? And just out of frustration, giving paper, paperwork, like you, I fill it out, print it out, mm-hmm. leave it on her side of the bed. And, you know, she called my mom and, what are you doing, mom fussing? And that ain't the way you do it. This is that and the other. And you're wrong, you know. So give me the ride act. Um, realizing that I'm handling it wrong, going, in, you know, going out that way. Uh, a good buddy of mine, and to the left of me had, had said, hey, man, I got somebody you can go talk to. And I'm like, I don't know. So I went and talked to this counselor named Wendy, wonderful, wonderful lady. Uh, went and hollered at her and went up and spoke. In that time, talking to Wendy, mm-hmm. she, was, she just gave me some pointers to say, it feels like you've been doing everything for everybody else. Feels like you make sure everybody else is good, and she just asked, "Who's making sure you okay?" I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, lip, that's like, when your mom uh, come <laughs> on the playground, <laughs> right? Somebody punched you <laughs> <in> the stomach, <laughs> <laughs> and then you wait till your mom get there, right. and she says, "What's up? What's up with you?" <laughs> <laughs> right, man. <laughs> I wanted to crawl up in Wendy's lap. <laughs> Start sucking your thumb. <laughs> uh, 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 yeah. you know, I want to do that whole thing. Just, you know, right, right. It, it just felt like, man, I want to give Wendy the biggest hug and just mm. lay down. Then that's the first time I felt like, man, wow, nobody wow. has ever checked on me to make sure yep. I was okay. But going through always wanting to be a good man, mm-hmm. be a good husband, be a good yep. provider. Be a good father. Do the you do the the things that you know is your responsibility mm-hmm. to do. Often we lose who we are. You know what I mean? A thousand percent. Often we yep. lose. Like, are you okay? Because we're going through this motion. We're going mm-hmm. through this motion just to keep mm-hmm. going, keep going, keep going. And we always like, we'll be all right. We'll be all right. To yeah, touch push it down. I'm keep it moving. Good. Good. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So just fix me a little plate. I'll be all right. I'll be good. Right, just right, right. Straight, but. Really emotionally, you spent. You get tired. You, spent, right. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know right. what I mean? Just going through in the smallest, you okay? You Now you like, man. Now mm-hmm. I felt like, yo, is Wendy single? Uh, <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> so, uh. Because I'm like, yo, uh, it's just that moment, right? right? right. Yeah, it's not, right. yeah. It's just like, yo, yeah. nobody really took time to just make sure. And ask me that simple question. Yep. Are you okay? Right, right, right. Is there anything I could do for you? Right. And it's like, man, man while we're going through the acts of making sure. Yeah, everybody sons, else. Daughters, mm-hmm. wife, you good? You okay? Mm-hmm. I got it. I'm going to get up in the middle of the night, make sure you got You know, you're going right. through to yep. make sure everything is okay. And the ease they played as much as possible. And it's like, we ain't asking for a lot. Mm-hmm. I didn't think I was nah, asking we, for Nah, we don't ask for a lot. We just want kind lot. of the fundamentals of what's going on. But right. then... Going through those moments, you start to learn. Uh, you got to have expectations for yourself, too. You have to. <laughs> right. Because the more you minimize you, the more you get lost. Absolutely. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But not knowing that. Right. And not being trained to, hey, you make sure you good first, then everybody right. else be okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's been the opposite. You make sure everybody else good. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then you'll fall somewhere in between there to be like, okay, right. you're all right. Yep. So... I just wanted to see how that felt for you with counseling because it's like we went through it, yeah, right. but it wasn't not one counselor. I could be like, okay, cool. <laughs> that, that, I think it made a difference, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, it, it 
I mean, it sucks, Doc, but I'm saying <laughs> a lot of, I can honestly say sitting and talking to, the benefit of having him as one of my best friends was right. that he had asked the questions like, well, how did that feel? Um, that's the get, that's the, the kicker in the stomach. You're like, so how's that? <laughs> he was like, so how's that working out for oh, you? Yeah, that, that's line, right? And then you up here like, <laughs> kind of like, uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you doing all that, so how's that right, working how's out that for working you? Working out for you. And, and, and that was, that, <laughs> I'm sorry, that, I'm that sorry. That was my thing, man. Uh, he talking, talking to him and honestly yeah. just, just getting down to, to seeing, Hey, so did you see that growing up, or how was it in your household? And just normal mm -hmm. questions, right? You're like, nah, like you know, my mom and dad operated like this. Our family was like this, blah blah blah. Um, and then to think you're really trying to replicate right. or mm -hmm. not replicate exactly what was there. You getting and it's still to find out you doing it all wrong. You are doing it wrong. <laughs> like your way ain't working. Yep. So you know when you know Reed used to hit me with those those same one liners like. Yeah, so how'd that work out for you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those I, one I don't want to hang up and be like, ah, you know what? I, I'm getting abused at home. I don't right, right, right. I'm, I'm calling. Nobody's answering my yeah. calls. It's like, you see me like, man, I'm not. I'm not about to answer this dude. You, yeah, you know what I mean? You reached a voicemail. Like, Come on, right? Like, I need an update. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not trying to just talk about this right, stuff. Right. And I'm, I'm like, I got to relive this after I talk to him. Like, oh come on, man. man, it's like it became frustrating. But those real like one liners get mm -hmm. you to be yep. like, okay, you're going through all that. <laughs> he said all that. I mean, honestly, man, but those are some <laughs> times that makes us think or makes yeah. us wonder and be like, how's that working? Yeah, I guess it ain't working out too good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, now that you think that's a real good question. Yeah. <laughs> uh so I, I guess I dropped the ball on that one. Yeah. So uh, maybe yeah. I need to switch my game up, you know. Yeah. So you I, mean, I, 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 I try to be delicate. But maybe I didn't. Nah, I don't nah, know. Nah, nah. In some, some cases, <laughs> right. there wasn't no right. delicacy to it, right? I'm up here like, man, trying to talk to you. And you're <laughs> 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 throwing out these. You want me to be gentle, right? right. You want me to have some compassion. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. hey, dummy. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> like Fred Sanford. <laughs> Big dummy. Yeah, right, right, right. Nah, it, it was it's real. You know, so right. He uh right. you know, he had the the um pleasure a few times talking to my ex on the phone. And uh, Is it a couple, couple times. Yeah, he a few said times, a few times. Hold on. Yeah. What was that? Um, and a couple of times he gave me some harsh reality, Joe. Uh, I definitely did not want to hear, right? I've heard a few. I've Cause, heard cause some. Because I'm being optimistic. Yeah, I'm right. Being optimistic. Oh, I'm, yes. I'm saying, yes. nah, we're we, 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 we going to be all right. You know, right. like this is going to, mm -hmm. you can get better. Uh -huh. And the last thing Dude, I'm that you want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> you get one of them? Dude, I'm trying to tell you. Because uh, yeah. in my uh, mind, I'm gonna be like, dude, you got one more time to talk about my, my wife. Right, right. right. Exactly, we boys. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> nigga, exactly, you got one more time exactly. to talk about my wife. Like, listen, yeah. I love you. I know we friends. Right. I know we friends. Friend. 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 You know, I'm gonna need you to calm yeah. all the way down. Right. 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 right, right, right. Like, I can't feel like I'm allowed to slide. I took exactly, bows. Exactly, exactly. Right. You know, I took bows, man. I'm right, right. Pick. And right, you were going man. Doing saying some stuff that I wouldn't let the <laughs> average man say. Exactly, exactly. I'm giving you a slide. <laughs> yeah, hey, right. hey, hey, listen. <laughs> I, I know y'all can identify. If I see somebody who's being done wrong, yeah, like yep. that's that's what my whole career is about is mm -hmm. helping people to recognize what's going on, um, and I'm I'm just a. Uh, I'm a father at heart. I'm a protector at heart. And um, and I just don't like to see good people. I didn't say perfect people. Right. So I don't like to see good <laughs> people done wrong, you know. And so that's where I don't even think about it. I don't even think about whether it makes sense. I just jump in. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, it yeah. don't even, hey, man, you shouldn't be saying that. Like, that ain't your business. It's just something about I have blinders on. And I'm just, just in. Go in. I'm just ten toes down. Like, dude, what are you doing? See, and I'm glad you did that because when you did that, and I listened, that's when I began to wake up. 
Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. when I began to be like, oh, I didn't know. See, Joey, you're an empath. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you just, everything's nice and this and that. And it's like, yeah. yeah. So when you're getting taken advantage of, you ain't going to know. And it's like, yeah. <laughs> but then again, I'm from Columbus. I'm from the south side of Columbus, Southfield. And you can have some street smarts and you can know and this and that. And he's like, man, I can tell when they're trying to run the game. But when you dedicating yourself to this thing called marriage and yeah. your wife, you do lose focus. Oh, you definitely you do. do. <clears throat> yeah, like speak, you said. Yeah. And speaking with, with having the <laughs> re giving some harsh <laughs> realities, right? right. Um, I will say – Knowing that, I wouldn't I wouldn't trade my friends for anything. And if you ever in life get people that you really can call oh, your friend, man. right? Priceless. Um, you got to keep them because I do know he gonna tell me the truth. The truth is wrong. You know what I'm yeah. Vice yeah. versa. However, yeah. it comes across. Yeah. At the end of the day, is I know it's gonna be for my better, for mm-hmm. the betterment of me, right? And even in, even him talking with her. And uh, having conversations, you know, he came back one time and said, he said, hey, Poop, you want the good news? You want the bad news? <laughs> <laughs> so I said, all right, what's good news? He said, uh, well, it can be helped and things can change if they dedicate going through some counseling and really getting some help. Right? And he said, now, Bad news is, if not, this ain't gonna work. <laughs> so I'm like, you know, so you get that that gut, like, you know, what? What you mean right, it ain't right. gonna work? And I'm like, he's like, nah, bro, I'm just telling you, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. So to me, he didn't give the whole, you know, I want to say the church right, thing to where right. everything is encouragement. Just keep praying. Uh-huh. Just keep right, praying. right, 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 right. Just keep uh-huh. praying. Right. I'm like, I've been praying, and my knees hurt. And uh, my face hurt. Real. And my my tongue is dry because I didn't pray a long time. <laughs> and at the end of the day, there's has not been steps taken to right. get better, right? Exactly. But having him and having real guys around that want to see your relationship work, right? And right. you realize, like, don't none of your homies that's your really best friends they they don't want to see you been done wrong. Mm-hmm. Your mm-hmm. true friends want right. to see you happy. Right. Your true friends want to see love around you. And why would they be mad because somebody else giving you love? Right. And, and you giving them love back, right? right. So it's like, right. what do they have to lose in it? Because at the end of the day, they don't want to be on the phone being like, man, we talking about this again? Yeah. <laughs> you know, so well, again. yeah, some of them do. Yeah, and they being mad, they, you know, it ain't working out for you again. Uh. Now we can't, can't invite y'all on a couple trips because... It's gonna be y'all going through y'all some beef. stuff, yeah, man. Every yeah. single time, like we want to feel, have love, and see that around. You know what I mean? So I can respect that. Get about. your hands out my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> be like, yeah, they go again. Right. <laughs> That's just them. Yeah. So now nah, I, I can respect that about really getting to having true friendship, man, and to know that being here with his journey and him and his wife sitting. I mean, it, it does my heart well to see him and his wife mm-hmm. sitting down and doing a podcast because yep. it's been, <laughs> it's been a lot you've seen a lot of different sides a lot of different yeah, sides both have yeah yeah, yeah yeah so to see how that yeah. On the transformation i tell him all the time I'm like read that's that you can take this as this is normal this is not normal <laughs> <laughs> right. right i'm like because you got two people that have went through what you guys went through to really get to the point to love each other, right? That ain't normal. Yeah, everybody don't make that transformation. Right. Yeah. Everybody don't make that change. Everybody don't have that to where you start off like this. It gets really, really rough. Yeah. And then yeah. almost you know wanting to go separate ways right. to pull yeah. them the back right. together. Right. And right. now it's love, right? Yeah. Everybody don't have that. Or nope. we have the routine. What what I grew up seeing is a lot of people stay married for religion purposes, but ain't happy. You know do it. That's right. You over their houses, and it's like this don't feel like some place I really mm-hmm. want to be at because they sleeping down here and up yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Those things, I'm like, I, I'm not getting married to do that. Mm-hmm. So to see where you guys are now, and you have you know successful 
loving marriage, man, mm-hmm. is like it is great. So I can take any criticism. I could take any advice coming from someone that done went through it yeah. and is continually building, right? So a lot of counselors, I don't know them personally. Yeah, yeah. So they can be giving you the what if thing, right? right. This is what you're supposed to do, and this is what's right. supposed to happen. Yeah, then when yeah. they get home, it ain't nothing like that. Right, <laughs> like, right. Nah, you, know, <laughs> like you ain't even living your marriage. Like, <laughs> right, right. You give me some stuff that you really want to do that you ain't doing yourself, right? Right, right. So, right. so, so yeah. yeah. So let me ask you this. Um, post-divorce, yours was finalized in January. Yours was finalized in March. Mm-hmm. What is it moving forward? you feel you can do have learned gonna do that's going to help you be a better version of yourself for the next situation because once you come out of a quote-unquote failed marriage especially as a man when i talk to men especially very success-driven men they say, man, that 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 felt like that was a failure, man. And they don't rebound from that easily. And it can make it much more difficult and scary to go into the next relationship because right. you don't want to fail again. Because you're like, I gave that everything. I mean, I, I didn't have nothing else. My pockets were empty. And I came up empty. Mm-hmm. So moving forward, what is it that you both feel that you can do that's going to help you move forward? to be optimistic, look forward to what lies ahead? Um, <laughs> uh, for me, there's a couple things. Um, I have to literally keep telling myself, just like I, I believe I, I share with you guys, I have to tell myself every day, those 24 years of knowing them, it, does, it didn't set you back. I remember back in the day, my brothers used to say, um, you got a new car? Oh, that's sweet. How much that set you back? You know, that was an old saying back in the day. Did did that twenty four years set me back to the point, man, for like just wasted time. And I have to say, no, because I did have some good moments. I had right. some great memorable moments. I have some moments that um I truly believe that they were really trying to be genuine, things like that. With that being said, I have to tell myself every day, hey Joey, um, no, you didn't waste time. You learned a lot, and there were some things you did not know. So now that you know, it's going to be another chance. So prepare yourself for that next person. And then once I began to do that, I have to tell myself, no, that was their loss. Mm-hmm. That wasn't your loss. You had a great time. You were serving me during that time. You weren't just serving because of the beauty of, the beauty of that woman or the because of what she could do and this and that. And that's how I have to tell myself all the time. And that's also part of my healing process, Mm -hmm. just in knowing that I didn't waste time. Right. Because like you said, I truly believe some career driven or focus driven men can feel like, man, that was a loss, man. So I'm going to stay in this dark room with the curtains closed and with my drink, you know, just be thinking, nah. uh -uh." And so I, Definitely tell myself that all the time just to keep myself encouraged. And so that's what I have to do. And also, it's giving me more questions of what to ask for the next young lady. Mm-hmm. Um, hey, how you doing? All right, good. And then, oh, that's your. Oh, yeah. So tell me about yourself. Instead of just getting so broad, tell me about yourself. <laughs> so tell me about your past few relationships, you yeah, know. Absolutely. Um, and then as you get to know a person, and I'm talking as quick as if I'm talking to you Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and Thursday, what's up? You have any past trauma? Yeah. How was your childhood? Absolutely. Yep. Get because right I'm not it. wasting time yep. uh, and all that stuff. Ooh. We're going to know if we're going to be compatible or we're not. Right. We're going to know quickly. It ain't, this is not going to be no this or that taking forever. Um, Cause I'll share with you mine and I need to know yours. I need to know what did you do to get better from that? Um, do you feel there's a change? Like how did you used to act compared to how you are now? You know, and then you can pick up and read on certain things that Absolutely. the person talks or this or that. Um, and that's, 
the things that I picked up and I know that I will ask more questions. I will ask more specific questions. Mm-hmm. And um, and then just from spending time, you uh, you can learn a lot from a dummy. You know, what I'm <laughs> you can learn a lot from just just like that commercial. You can learn a lot by just spending time with them and just listen to the way they speak and how they speak yep. about others and their family and their friends and this and that. Learn a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about you? Um, after I left <laughs> my my last this last situation, I, I told Reed I said, uh, <laughs> "You're gonna be finishing your last." No, I'm sorry, <laughs> man. It's just, it's just something's funny. Yeah. I, 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 told you <laughs> I said, uh, "Hey, listen, man. I'm, I'm, I'm. This is it. I'm not. I, I, I really didn't want a relationship. I didn't." Uh, I wasn't looking for anything serious. Absolutely. Um, at that, those moments, man, and those, even though it ended in January, like the divorce had been filed way before the end, right? Mm-hmm. And it was supposed to be simple, mm-hmm. supposed to be real easy, but it was. It, it had become tough, ugly, being put out of my house, um, having to continue to pay things and it, it it just got real ugly right mm-hmm. so through the lengthiness now we was already sleeping in separate rooms mm-hmm. prior, way prior to we was so we wasn't even acting like we was married right so just because we were still functioning up under the same house it was no marriage right no marriage there right um so it <laughs> after it, it was finally done going through the process because it, it was frustrating. I call, I would call Reed some mornings and they'll be Ooh. hot. <laughs> hot. Hot. I mean, because it was things that was happening. You just like, mm-hmm. like, why? Yeah, no. What's going on? Right. Like, how can a restraining order be put on you yeah. for these things? You know what I mean? Like, how can this stuff happen, right? Mm-hmm. And you go through and I was going through and I'm like, man, Lord, I would talk to the Lord, you know, daily, and, and it wasn't like, dear Heavenly Father, it, it wasn't nothing like that, not so formal. It was, hey, Lord, listen, I. This is some. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm doing the best I can. Yeah. I'm literally doing the best <laughs> I she can. She trying to kill my father. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and going through those processes, you know, Joe is like, you can't a lot of stuff you you can't even people say if that was me exactly yeah, okay. exactly okay yeah, okay I, I, me, I right. heard a whole I lot heard of a whole those. bunch of that <laughs> over, over the, the years i would have I said, okay. and i would have and i'm like <laughs> okay. okay like yeah. let okay yeah okay let let that happen that's me po- poop bro that's me couldn't be me yeah <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> couldn't be me <laughs> you know it's like okay all right but then you get to going and being like those started to teach me about my expectations, mm-hmm. what I can't do, what I wouldn't do, and what I wouldn't put up with, and being intentional on who I was talking to. So always having someone to talk to and spend time with if you wanted, but it was, man, it, it, it was months that I'm like, I ain't going nowhere, I ain't doing nothing, I ain't trying to be around nobody, I don't want to talk to no one. Uh, my daughter would be like, Dad, you ain't trying to date? You ain't trying to <laughs> I'm like, I don't, I don't feel like being bothered with nobody, right? Because mm-hmm. it was just years of having to be there, not feeling like, not feeling heard, not feeling like you was even valuable right. in a marriage that you were doing the most in, right? Um, so I, I know during that time, I, I, I had it in my mind, back in your head, to be like, <laughs> if I hear one more time, that's what a man supposed to do. <laughs> That's what a man supposed to do. That's, I'm like, nah. Like, you want some kind of award for yeah, something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you supposed to do. You the man. Yeah, you supposed yeah, to do. Yeah, like, yeah. Okay. He was. I, feel really I, I remember it. saying often, like, you know how to be a better man than I do. And you ain't never been one. Mm. <laughs> but you know how to be one, right? Yeah. It's like. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> you, so going through that, I went through the whole thing, not wanting to be a relationship, not wanting to, I would talk to different people, mm-hmm. but it was never going to be nothing serious. And we would, 
man, just wait. You wait. You're going to find something. Like, read. I don't care what you're talking about. Uh, this is it. I'm not going to do it because, A, I had realized I had not been in love, right? Because I wasn't seeking love going into these relationships or marriages. It was the missing puzzles, right? The pieces that I needed to be in place to formulate what I saw and what I had. Um, so going into... And when I did start talking to people, now my conversation is a little different. It's, hey, what's up? How you like? How long was your last relationship? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What's the reason why mm -hmm. y'all stopped? And to start asking the questions to hear these answers. Now mm -hmm. I want to hear how much of it is on them and what part are you taking on this shit? Exactly, right? exactly. Because the more you get to hearing like, I mean, they was tripping and they did this and they did that. And then, you know, I follow up with a question like, okay, did he have a job? Like, mm -hmm. Yeah. Was he, what was he doing? Like, was he hitting on you? Nah, no, nah, he never hit on me. Okay, was he getting drunk all the time? Nah, he wasn't doing that. So he had some basis of a sound like a good guy. Mm -hmm. But, <laughs> What's these problems? You know, so you get to ask and to be intentional about right, the right. questions you ask. But <laughs> those intentional questions right. <laughs> come from a lot of being in dark moments and being in counseling and understanding like, man, I wish I would have asked this early on. Mm. Then I would have known these answers, right? And people could fake their answers, right? Yep. Like they do in an the interview. They could say, mm -hmm. oh, no, nah, I could do this. I do that. I cook. I'm going to go through. I just want to get the job. Yeah, get the job. Yep, absolutely. And then... Now you like, man, you ain't cooking up one day this week. Yeah, but the yeah. performance is gonna show right. what's really going on. Right. Yeah. So either you can run a four three, a four two, or you can't. Okay. <laughs> yeah. so, so it's uh those those things, man, I start being um intentional about my questions. And then I started to say, it also shaped me saying, Do I wanna deal with someone with kids again? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Okay. Cause I got into what I did realize, no matter how much Love, money, support, days going to train, if it's a boy, days going to uh, take, go walking and spend money and mm -hmm. uh, make sure hair is done. And make sure the things that you would do for your daughters. Yeah, be a dad. Be a dad. Like those normal mm -hmm. things to those kids that are that you don't share the same blood with. That mom or that parent at any time can say, oh, you ain't with me, you ain't with them. Yeah. And this has nothing to do with what you done done. Yep, yep. This has nothing to do with the relationship you done built up. Right. This has nothing to do with those days that you done took off work to stay home with them because they sick. They got two other parents inside of you. They mom and they dad. So now to get back at you, nah. So now I'm like, you know what? Mm -mm. Hurt too bad. Yeah, it's like I can love like I'm supposed to love and treat them like they my own. Only for this person to be like, nah. Mm -hmm. Even though they would tell you, I'm, I would never do that to you. I would never. <laughs> you don't build a relationship up with them. It's that and the other. You're going to always have that. Yeah, you're always going to have that. <laughs> Until they like, nah, you don't want to be with me. You ain't being with them. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then they put the kids in the middle. So that start leaving that. I'm like, nah, I'm not going to. Their kids don't even have to be grown and I have none. Because mm -hmm. I can't. My heart can't mm -hmm. continue to go through to give, want, and make sure that they're good like a father would, mm -hmm. only for them to be like, they ain't your kids. Okay. Oh. So that started putting other expectations for me. Yep. So. Uh, now, I, re I remember, um, I think a prophet <sighs> might have told both of you something about one day you're going to hear how awesome you are and you're a great guy and, you know, um, and, and it's going to make you feel like, wow, you know yeah. what I mean? And uh, I think I remember Prophet telling one of y'all you, you're going to get married again. But um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, and, and let me give some context. So a lot of my clients over the years have been women, you know, have men as well. But one of the things that you can feel, man or woman, is that after this, it leaves you so broken. Mm -hmm. Your self-esteem is in the toilet. You know, somebody can say, oh, man, you know, especially as a guy, 
uh, attractive guy, successful. You can go out here, you can find love anywhere. You know what I mean? Women would just, but your self, your sense of self worth when you've heard certain things and uh, experienced something, certain things can make you feel just empty. Oh, yeah. So, like you talked about Wendy, you know, just her saying something simple. Like, you feel real good. Well, what about you? Who's who's checking in on you? That was like giving a, like a roach on a thumbprint. You know, uh, what I mean, yes, that sir. was everything. <laughs> yeah. You know, so have either of you experienced that? Just that comforting, not anything over the top, but just acknowledgement of you know you're a good guy because of these reasons. Blah 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 blah. Um, and and has it been a struggle at all in terms of your own sense of self worth? I have I have received uh heard those words a, a few times man and to be honest the first few times first time you hear heard first time I heard it it's like you know how you feel like you're doing the right thing you know in your heart you're doing the right thing but then it's questioned by because of the responses mm -hmm. it's questioned because of I'm doing what I know to be right, mm. but that reciprocation of the outcome of it makes it feel like it's wrong. It's like, mm -hmm. how am I? I know I just went and got this new house to make sure the family is okay, good. right? And mm -hmm. then you, but nah, the way they responding and reacting, it just ain't lining up. So mm -hmm. to hear, I first heard it like, are you for real? You a real good guy? I was just like, man. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you have to, for me, I'm questioned, you know, how good you are. Cause you'd be like, well, 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 hold on. You mean they didn't have to get naked and show their uh, whole body and all know, that? They, they, what, they didn't have to throw something extra on there. They just nah, told you. Just you recognizing, just... recognizing you as who you are. Wow. You know what okay. I mean? Because I think some guys <clears throat> do want to portray themselves certain ways, right? To be, I'm not that bad guy, the bad boy guy. I want to, you know, uh, be like, look at me as this, this person of being hardcore and this, this, and this. Like, I've never wanted to portray myself like that. So, for a woman to say like, oh yeah, that's a bad boy right there, then some guys take, you know, they take take that and roll with it. I never want to be looked at like that. Mm -hmm. So I just want to be good to somebody else. I want to treat that person right. And at the end of the day, not saying I'm doing it to be recognized. Right. But when somebody does recognize it, you're like, man, that's what's up. I appreciate that. Everything. Oh, it feels great. Feels great. So to have had that, it feels wonderful. Feels great. And it's not something that's posed uh, or dressed up in a little skirt showing everything. And it ain't, it ain't none of that. It's just someone that recognizes you for who you are. Mm -hmm. And it feels good to hear it. And know it's genuine. Right. 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 Yeah, that part. Genuine. No ulterior motive. Yeah, none exactly. at all. None mm -hmm. at all. What about you, Joy? Have you um, heard those words at all? I ha I have. Um, Did you cry, Joe? I, uh, you look I like a crier. Internally. <laughs> <laughs> I did feel a, su a suction of water beginning to <laughs> um, um Well, on the first part, thankfully, I never got at a low point. Yeah. And that guy can get at a low point and be like, man, I just feel useless now. You know, stuff mm -hmm. like that. So I never got to that point. I just had a few of those, dang, but why me? Yeah, yeah. I mean, what did I do? Yeah. Like, I mean, this ain't supposed to happen. This wasn't my plan. You know what I'm saying? And um, But when it came to those words, I did. I, I spoke with a friend of mine from way back in the day, man, and um used to be a, a couple and but we remain great friends and i've heard some great words that it did make me be like thanks i, I really appreciate that and uh, i don't think women understand when a man just comes straight out and say thanks i, I really appreciate that Man. you don't know how impactful that is to that person because those particular few words that probably didn't hear on a consistent basis is so therapeutic and also so therapeutic healing is 
but it also can bring fullness of life to that person. For sure. And um, in the least it did for me. And I'm like, dang, so should we get together? <laughs> you know, I mean, right, uh, but right, right, right. with that being said, I'm still at a point of just not getting things confused and still <laughs> remaining uh, getting joy together. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I love you. <laughs> it's I love like, you. It's like so. I feel warm so you've always over. been there, yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, but it 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 does. It feels so good, man. Because when you said that, it just reminded me. I was like. I really appreciate that. Oh, man, Thank you. Yeah. And it's that's one of those things that's that wasn't even a lot, but you looking at it like that's not I just said that and then you like you just don't know how that filled me up. Because I kinda almost felt like, dang, what was I not good? You right. know, was right. I messing up? Right. And all that stuff. All right. So I, I sounds like we're gonna have to do a part two. Um, because three. uh and and four, four, four. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, nah, so this was, this was good because, um, I, I think, and we're seeing a lot more about, you know, with men talking now, mm -hmm. you know, getting out here, being vulnerable and it's not as taboo as it was, or, um, you know, just not seen in a negative light. So, uh, I, I, I know y'all have helped not just men, I know y'all have helped women, uh, because they oftentimes women don't know what men really go through, how we really feel. You right. know, they think we're so hard, and you get out of one relationship and you just go to the next one. Um, but that's not the case. Right. So um, in this episode, special edition of uh, Opposites Attack, the Heart of a Man edition, I want to thank you for joining us. Appreciate you. And uh, there will definitely be a part Two and three, yeah, four, <laughs> right. yeah, yeah, and all because you know we we haven't even talked about social media, oh man, and, oh, man. and That's social media idea. therapy, oh, man. and some of the icons that have arisen in, in social media that sometimes we go back and forth about. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah so sure. uh, that's going to be a nice, uh, spicy segment. And of course, me and my wife will always be out here doing our thing. So appreciate y'all joining us. Take care. Peace. Peace.